Now, ladies and gentlemen, after one week of silence with no Counter-Strike 2 updates, Valve have finally spoken. This past week, that being Thursday and Friday, we received two brand new CS2 updates. This included quality of life updates, the most detailed blog post to date, but most importantly, added the community workshop back. No longer being on the Source 1 engine, but now Source 2. The possibilities are endless. Now, some players in the community might not find this important as of now, but as time goes on for future official content to get added to the game from Valve, such as an operation, a lot of the time they pick these maps from the workshop. This is a starting point for your everyday players Player, map creators to make and upload their own map in the hopes that it becomes popular, it's just for your friends, or could one day get added to the game. With recent rumors suggesting that old maps might make a comeback, you can now give them a try for yourself on the Source 2 engine. Maybe you miss playing Train, Cache, Cobblestone, but with this being added, that's all now possible. Now as of recording, it's now been a couple days since this update went live. Most maps from CSGO that were the most popular at the time have been approved and ported over to CS2, that being from Valve, but also the community. Today's video, I want to break down and discuss how you can access these maps, play and download them yourself, the best ones I've found so far alongside a bunch more. Now today's video sponsor is Skins Monkey. Skins Monkey is a buying and trading marketplace for your CS items. It makes a safe and easy way to trade out your inventory for something new. By using my code MANDO, you can get a deposit bonus of 35% alongside a free $5 in your first trade, with a max bonus if you spend $100 or more. With a large variety of skins, deposit options, alongside daily, weekly, and monthly giveaways, they're doing a great job rivaling other competition. If interested, it'll be the top of the link in the description below. Now very quickly, I want to start the video off by answering some frequently asked questions that I know I'll probably get in some of the comments section. How can you access the community workshop? Well, it's pretty simple. You go to the maps category or by searching when booting CS2, there's dozens, if not hundreds to choose from at this very point in time. And as time goes on within the next couple of years, there's gonna be tens, if not hundreds of thousands. Now our next question up is why aren't the maps I love from CSGO here? From what I know and I've heard from map creators in the community, it's not necessarily difficult, but somewhat of a tedious process to port maps over from source one to source two, if they haven't done so already for the most popular ones, but also they have to get manually approved by Valve. But the most popular ones as of now, which some will check out in today's video, have so far made it into the game. And as it goes for our last question, will older CSGO maps make a comeback to CS2, such as Train, Cache, Cobblestone, but primarily maps that haven't been in the map pool for some time. But we can see some recent leaks from data mines in the community pointing to a winter Cobblestone getting added possibly to CS2 very soon. We also saw Train and quite a few trailers for CS2, so we know that's been somewhat ported over and just, I think, waiting to come over to the game, as well as a map pool change, we're not sure. The Copenhagen Major in 2024 is popping up pretty soon, and I don't believe Valve is going to make any big changes like that before that actually happens. And finally, the gameplay category. I want to go over my favorite, but also popular maps from CSGO now in CS2. Now, the first one that's really great for aim training that was really popular in CSGO was aimbots. Now, very quickly, this is Luke in the post edit. I actually didn't notice until editing this video that in the aimbot server, you can now inspect every single knife inside CS2, that being the default vanilla version. So that may sway a lot of people over just to play aimbots, maybe before wanting to buy a knife, see what you like the most, looks the best, and is overall just a really good feature. Now for how long or if this stays in CS2, I'm not sure. Valve gets a little weird with things like this, where in community servers on CSGO, there was a brief moment where they tried to stop certain servers from having these in general. This didn't really see too much of an upgrade. It's practically the exact same. And towards the end of our gameplay segment, we actually have a better option. Now, if you want to just tap heads for a quick warm up, this is a great way to do so. And the same thing with aimbots with every other map, there just seems to be better graphics and quality of life updates here and there that were previously wrong in CSGO. Now, our next two maps are actually made by the same person or company, I'm not sure. That being Crash's Crosshair and View Model Map. Now these are two separate, but as it goes for Crosshair, if you want to copy some of the pros, the best ones in the world, or even make your own with a more in-depth system than the settings, well, you have now the option to do so. It's pretty detailed. This was also one of those maps that was very popular and a fan favorite in CSGO, now in CS2. And the same goes with the view model map. This one I find to be very beneficial for everybody because you can customize your FOV without inputting a bunch of random commands that ends up messing things up. And you can actually see things firsthand without doing some research. Same thing goes with the crosshair. You can copy the most popular ones in the game that seem to be some of the best for skins and gameplay and also memes. As it goes for gameplay maps with some of your friends or just for fun that you maybe haven't seen in CSGO that are now in CS2, the first new one up here is a sun Apparently this has been in development for quite some time, and it reminds me of Terminal from Modern Warfare 2, but also that one really weird Rainbow Six Siege map. It's very small. Would this make it to competitive? I have no idea. It would make for a pretty hectic game, and it's by far the most Call of Duty but Counter-Strike map I've ever seen, if that makes any sense, but somehow still looks and feels like Counter-Strike 2. Now, second to last up is a pretty big fan favorite from CSGO, but also very popular. If you ever want to settle a 1v1, you don't need Nuketown, you need Op Lego. You have six of your friends in a lobby trying to get a five-man together, put the two worst players together, whoever wins with 
the op gets to play. This pretty much looks like the exact same thing from CSGO, just better graphics on the CS2 engine, <laughs> not much else said. And lastly for the gameplay category is CS stats. Now if you remember at the very beginning we compared aimbots to a map that we haven't discussed yet, that being CS stats as of right now. In my opinion it's way more superior and over time as Counter-Strike 2 grows and the workshop just grows as a whole with more tools getting added, things get more optimized, I think this will be more played and subscribed possibly than aimbots. But of course only time will tell. Now why I like it more, there's a lot more possibilities here. This versus aimbots, the models in CS stats are a lot more realistic, meaning it feels like it gets more depth in in-game models from actual maps you play, not some random map just someone made on the workshop, like a crate on triple box from Mirage, playground from Overpass, and it's also very easy to get every gun on the wall, and also change up every single setting. Everything loads instantly and the FPS is great. There's a shuffle and run feature, so the shuffle players mix back and forth, you also have the ability to tap on headshots or not, so it gets more of that actual practice and realistic feel, because in aim training for aimbots for an example, yes they can move around, but this I feel like is more realistic because of the models and it warms you up a lot better for an actual in-game situation or scenario and the run feature will everyone runs do it's a lot harder than it looks I gotta say it makes you get a lot better handling things like a 1v1 or just everyone rushing you all while under pressure and that's it for the gameplay category now some things to know like we mentioned at the beginning of the video not everything from CSGO is here yet in CS2 that being for the workshop map creators still have to port their maps over if they haven't already to CS2 as well as get approval from Valve which from what I've heard can take some time all of CSGO's official maps from Valve are playable and this goes for every workshop map, but the performance isn't really great. It's not well optimized because it's coming from Source 1 to now Source 2. Certain textures or colors are going to look a lot darker or lighter than they should be if things might not be in the right places. Now this is just the beginning with Source 2. The possibilities are endless when it comes to map design, graphics, and creativity. Let me know what you guys think about this update down below. What are your favorite workshop maps as of right now? Love to hear. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Stay positive, stay sexy. I'm out guys. Peace.